Good morning. It's interesting, every year we do this, once the screen goes up and that banner shows up, I have to stay off stage for a little bit because the cameras come out and I know that the banners are better looking than I am. So uh, um, my name is Brian Granada. I am the athletics director and it's my pleasure to... It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2022 Arcadia Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Today, today's going to be a great day. Uh, to be honest with you, today's already been a great day. It's been an absolute pleasure to welcome you back to campus, and we're really looking forward to celebrating the wonderful accomplishments of our alums that have made tremendous contributions to the Beaver College and Arcadia University community, and we're going to learn so much more about them as the ceremony unfolds. So thank you for joining us today. This is a special event that we circle on our calendars. It's something we come together every other year to celebrate and something that will be uh, a special, special memory for so many folks in this room. Before I get too far into my remarks, I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize a few key groups of folks and, and some select individuals. We are joined here today by coaches, current student athletes, faculty, staff, members of our president's cabinet, and so many important individuals that are key contributors to our athletics community. Um, in particular, I'd like to recognize our former athletics director and Hall of Famer in her own right, Shirley Little. Please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Shirley is a role model to so many and somebody I had a chance to overlap with for six weeks when I took over in 2012, but somebody I've leaned on for advice and, and, and talked to quite a bit over the last decade plus, and, and thank you, Shirley, for all that you've done to, to guide this, this unit for, for so long. Um, we're also joined by, I'll say, also another Hall of Famer and legendary student athlete and legendary tennis coach, Betty Weiss. Betty, join us in standing... <laughs> Um, we are also uh, so very fortunate to have tremendous leadership here at this university. We unfortunately are not able to have President Jay Nyer with us today, but we have several key members of his cabinet uh, with us. And as a group, we have <clears throat> tremendous leadership from an esteemed collection of vice presidents. I will recognize them as a group, and if they could, when I... When, when I finish, if they could collectively stand, we have Vice Presidents Hall, Singleton, Rutenbeck, Bryant, uh, and Sweeney. If you could all please stand and be recognized. They are tremendous uh, leaders on this campus and advocates for athletics and folks that I, I work with routinely that provide tremendous mentorship, uh, guidance, and work through the hard stuff day in and day out. And uh, I don't envy the hard work that they have to do to, to lead this university, but they do it uh, with remarkable grace and stewardship, and thank you all for, for your, your kind support of this department. Um, one thing that we do do as well is we invite a few student athletes to join us, current student athletes that represent the sport programs that are represented on the wall by the inductees that are going into the Hall of Fame today. I think it's a great opportunity for our current crop of student athletes to uh, see ideally role models who have accomplished quite a bit in their careers and to hear the stories of what being a student athlete at Beaver College and Arcadia University meant and maybe to give them something to aspire to and maybe down the road 10, 15 years from now they will be sitting in this room themselves being inducted into a Hall of Fame, but I would like to ask that our current student athletes that are here with us today to please stand and be recognized. You're all tremendous role models that are carrying on the tradition of Arcadia Athletics, and we hope that you're in inspired by the stories that you hear today. But let's make no mistake, today is about five remarkable individuals. Amy, Andrea, Jackie, John, and Scott, today's your day. It was a long time ago, it feels like, several months ago that I made that call or sent that text or sent that crazy email that was a shot in the dark trying to find some random people that we maybe didn't have contact information for that was 
hey, I'm Brian, I'm the AD, I need to get in touch with you. Uh, did you play sports at Beaver or Arcadia, and uh, are you this person I'm trying to reach? And lo and behold, months later, here we are, right? Do you remember those calls and those texts? Um, well, here we are. Um, today's your day, and there's going to be an opportunity over the course of the next hour plus for us to hear a lot about the why, the why you're deserving of sitting in this room and being enshrined and recognized on this wall and in that gymnasium and in that Hall of Fame room. And uh, you certainly all do deserve the honors that are being bestowed on you today. But more importantly, we're going to hear from you about what your experience meant, what it means to you to, to be honored here today and what your collegiate experience was like and what it feels like coming back to your alma mater after, for some, being away for quite some time. And we had a chance to, to talk about that a little bit over the last couple of months. Some of us got together for lunch over the summer or, you know, we chatted on Zoom. Zoom has provided an opportunity to, to connect in ways that we didn't imagine a few years ago. And, you know, we shared some stories and we learned a little bit about each other and we connected in ways that we didn't think were possible. And, you know, we, we learned that a lot has changed and the university has grown in ways that we never probably imagined. And we even heard it today. Well, this place just looks different, right? Um, in some ways it feels different but in other ways it feels the same and it feels like home and we hope that it feels like home again today. So we're hopeful that through your time on campus today, some of those memories do come back and we look forward to hearing from you and your remarks about uh, your experiences and what it means to be a knight. So we're really looking forward to, to your remarks. Um, but you know, there's gonna be a lot of uh, possible tears shed and a lot of heartfelt remarks. We do want to be the first to congratulate you, though. So the five of you, if you could please stand and, as a group, be recognized. <laughs> the Hall of Fame was originated back in 2008. I, I can only assume it was the brainchild of Shirley and most likely also our former Vice President of Student Affairs, Jan Walbert, and they collectively put together the Hall of Fame as a way to showcase and honor the outstanding accomplishments of outstanding student athletes and coaches and contributors to the Beaver College and Arcadia University community and those that went on to impact the world of sport after their time at the university. Um, there was a time early on where there was an annual induction event and after a few years we did transition to an every other year format. Um, so that started around 2014 where we went to an every other year format and we've done that way, we've gone that way ever, ever since. It is a prestigious and exclusive group of individuals that are enshrined into the Hall of Fame. As of today, before this event is complete, uh, there's only been 66 individuals recognized and honored into the Hall of Fame. It'll be 71 after today. And there's been four teams bestowed the honor of being recognized as a team, Hall of Fame team, okay? So this is an exclusive group, and you should all understand the um, remarkable honor that this is. You have accomplished a tremendous amount during your career, um, and we are incredibly proud of what you have accomplished. You've made an indel left an indelible mark on this institution and its athletics program, and we're incredibly proud of you. One thing that I typically do since most of my remarks during during this event are geared towards the inductees and their families and friends that are coming back is to give a little bit of a state of Arcadia athletics because so much has changed right through our conversations this summer I heard a lot of stories of I remember Linda Detra Shirley Little and my coach and not a lot else right I remember five or six sports maybe ten and not a lot else and Maybe the Cook Center was here, or maybe the Cook Center just got built or was just opening. Well, a lot has changed, candidly. Um, thanks to the leadership and support of the board and our, our president and our vice presidents, there's been an immeasurable investment in athletics over the course of the last 10 to 20 years. And we are incredibly fortunate for that. There's been an investment in personnel and investment in facilities. We've grown considerably. We have, during my tenure here, we have grown from 14 varsity sports to 26 varsity programs. We went from supporting around 250 student athletes to north of 550 student athletes on this campus. 
as I said, our facilities have turned over. We've heard those remarks today throughout the morning of how different, Jackie, maybe not quite as much for you, right? Um, but for most, it looks and feels very different in terms of um, the turf field and the cook center and a softball field that used to be a parking lot and so many other things that are just different. And there's a lot more in store in the future. Um, you know, I... Maybe I'm not optimist in, in many ways, but I truly feel that our best years are still ahead. I don't think this department is done growing, and I don't think this, do, this department is done accomplishing what it can accomplish. So, you know, I could sit up here for probably an hour rattling off the awards and accolades and things that we have done over the course of Shirley's tenure and, and during the time that I've served. I don't think it's, uh, it's because of my, my time or because of Shirley. It's greater than the sum of two individuals. It takes the support of, of capable leaders and a, and a vision from the top down and coaches and student athletes executing on that vision. And ultimately, um, it's, it's through alumni support and, and folks working together to raise, raise a level of performance. So we've done a lot, but I'm really excited about what the future can hold for this, for this department and for this university. Um, we do that, though, and I say, say all along that Arcadia is the quintessential Division Three, regardless of what we're trying to accomplish on the court or in the pool or whatever the playing surface may be. We will never sacrifice the academic piece. We, this institution has a rigorous academic component. We challenge our student athletes in the classroom. They excel and have a 3-2, 3-3 cumulative GPA semester in, semester out. They give back to the community with thousands of hours of community service year in and year out. They're engaged on campus. They take part in, in, in global experiences. They study abroad. It is, as I said, the quintessential Division Three program where it's not just about wins and losses, but let's not make mistake. We want to win, and we've done that pretty damn well over the course of the last few years. Um, we've had numerous conference champions. We've had individual champions in a multiple sports. We have had nationally competitive and nationally ranked teams, and that, that is going to drive us day in and day out. Um, our departmental core values are centered around an acronym of IGRU, and that's what we ask that our student athletes do during their four years or sometimes five years with us is that they grow, right? Um, it's about integrity, growth, respect, excellence, and well-being, right? Pretty simple stuff. From an integrity standpoint, that they're honest and ethical in what they do and how they, how they engage and treat people. That they grow as individuals, they get better over the course of the four years, and that they're not the same as when they come in to when they leave. The respect aspect, pretty self-explanatory. We want good people. We want to model quality behavior. Excellence, we want to be good in what we do, in the classroom, on the court, on the playing surface. We want to win. From a well-being standpoint, we want, to, we want to treat them well from a sport performance standpoint, from a mental health standpoint, from an athletic training standpoint, from a strength and conditioning standpoint. We want to take care of our people. So collectively, those values come together to shape what we do on a day-in and day basis and drive what we do and try to make our student athletes successful and what our student athletes and what our coaches and what our staff model each and every day. So again, um, out of fear of going on for too long, um, I will try to end on that. Uh, today is a remarkable day. It's a centerpiece of a tremendous amount of work that goes into the homecoming weekend. Uh, when I come up at the end, I'll, I'll, I'll offer some reminders of some of the activities that are going on around athletics with the various games that we have going on. But this is, this is going to be a fun day and a fun event. And I appreciate you all joining us here today. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce our Associate Vice President for Philanthropic Giving, Dennis Brosnan, to make some remarks. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> That's more like it. It's an absolute honor to be here uh, and a privilege uh, on behalf of the Division of University Advancement. And it's also a privilege to partner with University Athletics at this incredibly special event. This is a critical part of this weekend's homecoming and family weekend series where we have hundreds of Arcadia alumni, students and their families, and community members rally around athletics in all that is great and true of their home, Arcadia University, and for some, Beaver College. 
This weekend centers around two words, spirit and pride. No one understands that more than our student athletes and the five outstanding alumni that we're celebrating today. It is through Scott, John, Jackie, Amy, and Andrea that we have seen firsthand how spirit and pride translates to excellence both on and off the field. In university advancement, we strive to make sure that excellence translates not only on and off the court, but also beyond graduation when we welcome our students into the alumni lifelong family. The 2022 Hall of Fame honorees are the alumni we hold in high regard and that we are excited to lift up and recognize today. They are the thought leaders and doers who are committed to the growth and success of Arcadia University both today and every day into the future. It is important for us to appreciate the example we have in our honorees today and to challenge ourselves to follow their lead in being the best we can for the next generation of honorees, students, and alumni to come behind us. Through my work, I'm incredibly fortunate to reconnect alumni with their home, to watch as their eyes light up, as their memories come rushing back to how special Arcadia was for them. This afternoon, as we lift up our honorees, I hope it will be one of those moments for Scott, John, Jackie, Amy, and Andrea, as well as all of you joining us here this morning. And as I wish my final congratulations to our esteemed honorees, I want to encourage everyone to stay engaged with Arcadia University, to continue the momentum from today in the future for our students through your leadership, through your philanthropy, and service as engaged alumni and to encourage others to join you. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2022 Hall of Fame honorees. I hope to see you at the remaining homecoming and family weekend festivities and at future alumni experiences this year. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Uh, my name is Adam Planamento, and I am the Director of Athletic Communications here at the University. Um, for me, this ceremony holds special meaning. It's my first ceremony as the Director of Athletic Communications, and I'm also a 2012 graduate of the University who played on the baseball team. Um, it's my honor today to introduce the five newest inductees to the Arcadia University Athletics Hall of Fame. Um, before we begin, I'd just get like to give a little rundown of how today's ceremony will work. Um, I'll invite each inductee and their presenter to the front of the room. The presenter will remain off stage to my right while the inductee is presented with their award on stage by Brian Granada. I will then provide career information for each inductee. I will then introduce the presenter who will provide more personal information on the inductee. The inductee will then come forward to the podium for their speech. We will repeat the process for the next four inductees after that. Now without further wait, Let's get to the 2022 class of inductees to the Arcadia University Athletics Hall of Fame. I would now like to invite our first inductee, Scott Wimsey, and his presenter, Tom Carlin, to the stage. Our first inductee today is Scott Wimsey from the class of 2014. A four-year member of the Arcadia University men's soccer program, Wimsey was the second player to be named an All-American when he was named to the second team in 2005. Wimsey was named first team All-Region in 2004 and 2005, and first team All-Pennsylvania Athletic Conference in 2003, 2004, and 2005. Wimsey helped lead the team to, a pack to pack championships in 2002 and 2004, as well as an Elite Eight appearance in 2002. That 2002 men's soccer team was inducted into the Hall of Fame with the class of 2012. Wimsey was also named to the men's soccer 25th anniversary team by the PAC, which is now the Colonial States Athletic Conference. For his career, Wimsey ranks first in penalty kicks made with eight, first in games played with 86, sixth in points with 67, 
fifth in goals with 29, and tied for second in game-winning goals with nine. Wimsey holds the single-season record for penalty kicks made with six in 2003, ranks second in game-winning goals with four in both 2003 and 2005, ninth in single-season goals with 12 in 2003, and is tied for ninth in points with 29 in 2003. Wimsey, who played professionally for the Philadelphia Kicks of the Major Indoor Soccer League after graduation, earned his bachelor's degree in history in 2014 after finishing his playing career in 2006. Wimsey and his wife Beth have three children, twins Alexis and Riley, age 12, and Scotty, age 8. Scott is being presented today by Arcadia's former head coach, currently the head coach at Villanova University, a graduate from the class of 1999 and a 2013 inductee to the Arcadia Athletics Hall of Fame, Tom Carlin, who I would now like to invite to the podium. Um, thank you, Brian, Hall of Fame committee, for having me back on campus. Um, you know, I, I spent 10 years of my life here, um, and it really was my second home. So um, to see the growth and how much has changed is unbelievable. Um, Shirley, hello. Uh, it's wonderful to see you again. Uh, Shirley Little was the athletic director when I played here and, um, you know, was, um, uh, was the woman who hired me uh, to be the head coach and uh, instilled a lot of trust in me at 23 years old, uh, coached a you know, uh, team that I had just played on two years previous. Um, congrats to Jackie, Andrea, Amy, my boy Bellis, uh, John. Um, and um, you know, John was here when, when I was uh, an administrator here and, and coached here and um, was very good friends with his coach, Stan Exeter. Uh, and most importantly, congrats to Scott. Um, unbelievable story. Um, listen, like, first of all, one of the best things about coaching, I've been coaching for a little less than 25 years now, is the families that you get to meet and the players that you get to coach. And uh, the Whimsy family, um, unbelievable, unbelievable family. Um, you know, it was, it was during a time when, when there was a lot of success and, a lot of accolades, but um, most most important from that time was the relationships and and the people that that we surrounded ourselves with on a daily basis, and uh, being able to be a part of their family and now see Scott with his you know three beautiful children and wife, um, it makes me proud. That's you know as a coach when you get older, that's what really is important, you know. Um, but Scott Scott came in to a team in two thousand and one. Uh, we had the breakthrough in 2001. I played here for four years, and um, we were close, but but never won a pack playoff game and so on and so forth. And in 2001, it broke. And uh, that team was 17-0-1. And Scott came in in 2002 as a freshman, uh, probably 130 pounds soaking wet, um, red bushy hair. And um, we didn't really know how good Scott was going to be. Um, but for him to come on to this 2002 team that was inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, as a team, and, and I, I can't imagine modern day that there's any team that is as successful uh, as that 2000 team at Arcadia University. Um, and to start as a freshman and to come on the minute, you know, we, and we had a lot returned from that 17-0-1 team previous. And to start every minute of every game and step on the field and, and really just own, you know, he's a left-footed guy. All of his accolades, by the way, that you heard was as a defender, right? All those goals, uh, everything that you, you heard about him, he was, he was a defender. Um, so, so for him to come on right away and, and then just throughout his career, I mean, you know, he played in 86 games. Um, he was an All-American. It was very hard to be an All-American at Arcadia at that time. You know, uh, there was only two of them, Tom DeGeorge, who is also in the Hall of Fame and, um, you know, was, was kind of the forefront of that team for years. Um, you know, and four game-winning goals, uh, 29 goals as a defender. We were 31-2 uh, and two in conference during Scott's four years, uh, 64, 16, and 8. Uh, over 700 winning percentage in, in Scott's four years. Um, 
and and just like you know his ability to come right in and blend, but then also his his relentless pursuit of getting better. You know, um, he was he wanted to play professional soccer. He wanted you know, and that's not easy from Division Three, right? Um, he wanted to be the best at what he did, and uh, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable what he was able to accomplish um, after two thousand and two. We did not think 2003, 4, and 5, we were ever going to be able to match. We knew that was lightning in a bottle. We, we knew that, I mean, I was just happy to be a part of it. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I, I, I mean, really, I was 24, you know. Uh, what did I know at that point? Um, but I, I, I knew that I recruited great people. And, um, and in 2003, we were kind of wondering what the heck was going to go on, really, with, with what 2003, 4, and 5 we're going to look like, but I'll tell you what, this guy took over. This guy took over. It's unbelievable. Uh, he became an All-American. He wasn't, the other guys we recruited, uh, Tom DeGeorge and, and some of the other guys with their accolades, when they came in, that's really who they were. A lot of them were transfers, uh, but Scott wasn't that, and he made himself that, and that's more impressive than anything else that any of these other guys have done, and, uh, you know, it's just a, just a credit to him and, and his work ethic, and, um, you know, listen, what's going to live on about, what's going to live on um, with, with Scott Wimsey in this program? Um, it's the type of man he is now and that he was during his time here. Uh, it's the type of teammate he was, uh, and it's his work ethic. And uh, really, um, you know, made this place proud. He has a, I just looked at his kicks ring, his champion ring, playing professional. Um, it's just unbelievable what he was able to accomplish. And, and of course, it was at the mercy of, of you know, academics. You see, that's 2004. 14 is not when he was out of here. Um, you know, he left to go play professionally, but he got it done. And, that, and that's just the persistence and the fortitude that he showed, and that's really just Scott Whimsy in a nutshell. So, um, hey, listen, um, you know, uh, being able to coach this guy and be a part of his career and be a part of his family's lives is just a, is, I'm just blessed. So uh, without further ado, Scott Whimsy. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Uh, first, I want to start out with thanking the Arcadia Alumni Association for this tremendous honor. To Brian, Adam, thank you. Oh, also, a couple of people I want to recognize that came out to celebrate this amazing day. My wife, uh, Beth, my three kids, Alexis, Riley, Scotty. My parents, Bob and Cheryl. My in-laws, John, Mary, Claire, and Chris. And obviously all my teammates. And the one who made this all possible, uh, Tom Carlin. I was very excited when I got the call from Brian that I would be getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. <clears throat> Growing up in Northeast Philly with four brothers, soccer was always a big part of our family. Traveling from tournament to tournament, state to state, indoor and outdoor soccer became a year-round sport for us. I remember playing for Penn Academy growing up and my dad coaching us <clears throat> for up until we were about 12, 13 years old. That's when my first real eye-opener as a soccer player happened. Our local team folded, so I had to go try out for a select team which unfortunately I did not make. I was cut. But my love for the game did not give up. I then ended, entered the greatest high school round, Father Judge. Any judge people? No? No? No, all right. I played all four years there, and it grew my passion and built <clears throat> on my confidence. I quickly realized soccer was a lot more serious at that level, at, and it practically became my life with having practiced five, six times a week in addition to a game or two. During my time at Judge, I was awarded all Catholic, both junior and senior year. After my senior year, I thought my playing career would have ended until I came to my first Arcadia game and uh, spoke with Carlin. We talked about my senior year and how I struggled, and I think my team struggled because we weren't that good. That didn't scare Carlin off at all. He kept trying to recruit me. He would tell me he loved guys from Philly because, and from the Catholic League because we had something about us that other players didn't have. So I agreed to attend Arcadia. I had no idea what I was getting myself into, so I figured to ease myself into a massive change, I would just commute, drive with Tommy D. George, the other All-American, he was a close friend of mine, uh, my freshman year, so I just commuted my freshman year. I thought if I stayed on the outside, it wouldn't be as intense and intimidating. But no, nope, boy, was I wrong. <laughs> my freshman year, Carlin decides to host training camp in England. 
So 10 days in a different country for, for our training camp was a real eye-opener. So at that point, I was figured I, I, I have to buy all in. <clears throat> Carlin was definitely knew what he was doing. Thank God, because it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. I have friendships that would last a lifetime with my Arcadia family. We bonded, we grew, we argued, we fought each other, but at the end of the day, I knew I had their back and they had mine. We were a team from top to bottom. It didn't matter who we played that day, we knew Carlin would have us ready. It wasn't that we were the smartest, the most talented team, or even the most consistent team every game, but I guarantee you we were going to outwork you. A great quote I uh, always look at back on is, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Carlin installed that, this attitude into us early and <clears throat> on in every season. Even though we probably hated him and cursed him out a lot during training camp, we all knew the success we would have during the season. That being said, we were ranked in the country every year and even as high as sixth in the country at one point. We made it all the way to the Elite Eight where we lost to St. Lawrence. Winning cures all, and he made soccer enjoyable again. I think I could speak for a majority of the teammates I had and mention that he was the best coach we've ever played for. For the last time, thank you. Uh, a couple stories I want to share. So we lose. We're ranked 10th in the country at one point. Uh, we go to the sales. We lose. I think one nothing. So, I mean, he's a very intense person, so he is going crazy. So he said, uh, all right, 5 a.m. run tomorrow. So we're like, all right. So we're all in the front of Cook Center, 5 a.m. Uh, he comes. He's still really hot. He had his toothpaste on his chin here. But he doesn't know, so like he's yelling at us, yelling, and we're like, oh, no one can look at him. Everyone has their head down trying to stretch. So he's like, go, run. So we go for an hour, run through Glenn's side. We're all laughing. We come back, and he's sitting there with this smirk on his face, probably the same smirk he has now. He's like, no one could tell me I had toothpaste on my face. I said, oh, yeah, well, you're ready to rip down the cook center front door. Yeah, I doubt that's the last thing you want to hear. And also, uh, Arcadia was a big uh, traveling, so we would play up in Messiah. We would play big night games because we were ranked in the country, and a lot of teams, we played big games against big teams and, and like, prime time. So we had traveling fans. And one thing that will always stick out, how many people came to these games. Our Elite Eight game was all the way up in St. Lawrence, which is about 20 minutes from Canada. We had Arcadia had a busload of faculty and students drive up for the game, and many others just drove up the night prior to go out basically party in, in Canada while we were getting ready for the game. And uh, I do have a huge thank you to probably the biggest fan, my dad. I think he missed two games in four years. So that was a good one. And the last uh, quote for all the student athletes out here, you can't cheat the grind. It knows how much you invest it, and it won't give you, it won't give you nothing you haven't worked for. Basically, put in what you want, and you'll be successful. Again, thank you. And I uh, appreciate it, Brian, Adam. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Um, I would now like to invite our next inductee, John Bellis, and his presenter, Nate Schill, to the stage. Our next inductee is John Bellis, a member of the class of 2006. A four-year member of the Arcadia University baseball program, Bellis was named second team all-region by the American Baseball Coaches Association in 2005, first team all-pack in 2005 and 2006, second team all-pack in 2004, and the South Jersey Baseball Coaches Association Division III Player of the Year in 2005. Bellis was also a member of the 2004 pack champions that advanced to the NCAA regionals. During his career, Bellis made his way into the record book, currently with the third most hits, second most RBIs, second most runs, third most triples, fifth most doubles, second most stolen bases, and third most games played. Bellis recorded the third most RBIs in a season with 46 in 2005, the second most runs with 51 in 2005, the eighth most runs with 45 in 2006, and the eighth most stolen bases with 22 in 2006. 
Following graduation, Bells played with the New Jersey Jackals and also served as the Knights head coach in 2008. Bells graduated with his bachelor's in psychology in 2006. Currently, John is a regional manager with All-Star Baseball Academy and serves as an elder at Calvary Chapel in Quakertown. Bellis and his wife Jamie have five children, Grace, age nine, Abigail, age seven, Elizabeth, age six, Benjamin, age four, and Madeline, age two. At this time, I would like to invite John to the center of the stage. John is being presented today by his friend and high school teammate, Nate Schill, who I would now like to invite to the podium. Good morning, everyone. I'd just like to take a moment and thank you, Brian. Thank you, Adam, for one, just being in touch with me over email, give me a little bit of, uh, of an idea of how to humanize this guy, <laughs> which is uh, very easy to do. But I'd also just like to thank for a moment the faculty and the staff of Arcadia University, especially the athletics department, for hosting such a worthy event to honor all of today's inductees. And just again, thank you for the invitation to share a little bit more about John Bellis, who's a dear friend and a brother of mine for the past 30 years. I'm not even that old. <laughs> I want to start with a funny story about John. When he and I were about 17 years old, we'd often walk around town at night just talking about life, and he turns to me this one point and says, hey, do you want to play six inches? And I say, what is six inches? He goes, you know, put your hand out like this. Put it up to my face. And he said, and then you're going to punch me in the face. And I'm going to punch you in the face. You know, like, you know, just in case we ever need to practice, in case we ever need to throw down with anybody. And me, being the smarter of the two of us, said, all right. <laughs> what I've learned most from those days is that John still possesses the same zeal, but by God's grace it's channeled in way more productive ways. So one of the best ways I can humanize him and describe him outside the numbers is to say that John is fearless. He was as a player and a teammate because that's who he is. And he does things for others that leave a lasting impact, that lift them from a place to a better place than where they were. Whether he's coaching or ministering to people in their troubles he has never shied away nor skirted any responsibility. In fact, he pursues and embraces these opportunities and is loyal to the task. I'm going to modify a little bit of uh, his job responsibilities now. If he wasn't a pastor, I could imagine his vocation being in one of many protective service jobs, like a first responder, because he conducts himself as someone who runs towards the fire, out of a love and a concern for anyone in harm's way. John lives his life by the grace and the gospel of God, and there's one Bible passage in particular that he's exhibited noticeable gratitude. In the book of Isaiah, it says, With his wounds we are healed. This is a passage that predicts the death of Jesus, the Savior of the world. And I believe that John is drawn to this verse because he understands the cost of his Savior's suffering and the sacrifice so that he and any of us can have eternal life. He understands that we can be truly healed. And John gets up every day with a passion to share that healing with others. And that's not just who he is now. That's who he's been for the past 30 years. So as I close and as John comes up here, he's a man who loves God, loves his wife and children, and serves others faithfully without fear. I'm thrilled for him and to receive this award and this recognition. It's well-deserved indeed. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. So that I stay inside my time frame, I wrote everything down. So just read it. So it's an honor to receive uh, the recognition. Uh, it's very, very humbling, to be completely honest with you. Um, not, not really a big fan of attention, unless it's physical altercations, obviously. Uh, 
formally, I do want to you know, thank Arcadia University. This is a absolutely, uh, I had a wonderful four-year experience here, much beyond baseball. Uh, thank you to the athletic department, which during my tenure was run with tremendous class. Uh, Shirley Little, I was so excited to see her today. Um, Stan Exeter, who was also my coach, helped her out. Uh, was kind of her runner, I believe. Uh, currently, the class and professionalism has been obviously carried on after all these years. Brian, Mike, Adam, Scott, you guys have been absolutely excellent to work with in communications um, these past few months. You guys have been uh, done a wonderful job, not just obviously with carrying on you know, what is an extremely classy place, but, uh, but you represent the university very, very well, so I really thank you guys um, a ton. And uh, Coach Brian Torsani, I should I think should also get some recognition today. He was named the Regional Coach of the Year, I believe, correct? So congratulations, Coach Brian. <laughs> I'm glad that Brian's coaching here. I, I did have a two-year stint as an assistant and then an then, uh, interim head. Um, much like Coach Carlin, uh, Shirley was crazy enough to give me a 23-year-old head coach responsibilities as well. So... <laughs> It worked out. Uh, I'm going to do my best to just deflect attention for a few minutes to those who deserve the praise today. Um, so first, my wife, Jamie, did not teach me anything about baseball. Um, but she was a gift of God's grace in my life. More than a decade ago, I love you, Jamie, very much. Um, not, just, not just for giving me a bunch of kids. That's just the second reason. I'm thankful my kids could come. Gracie, Abby, Ellie, Ben, Maddie, and actually Daniel is in the womb right now. Um, so we do have lots of kids, and obviously, as you can see, I'm still trying to break records uh, as I go here. So glad my mom could be here, a constant support, internal motivator for me. She displayed what perseverance meant growing up, still displays it today, one thing I took to the field. Thank you to my sisters and their families for coming. Thank you, Momo, for being here. Momo is my dad's wife, who came into my life when I was just getting into the grind of travel sports. Without question or expectation of recognition, just will, or looking for recognition, she was willingly ready to just wash all my dirty uniforms all the time and uh, took on the life of a travel parent, which obviously prepared her for her son, Dustin, who unfortunately couldn't be here, my brother, playing at Rutgers today for baseball, um, but thanking him for carrying on the ingrained commitment and loyalty taught to us by my dad. My, my uh, high school coach, Rich Horan, could make it today. Uh, which is awesome. Uh, I will say um, he is, uh, he's a record holder in South Jersey, actually the state of Jersey with, with wins. He's been coaching for a long time. Um, that coach taught me grit, uh, taught me a tremendous amount about winning, as he's done for many years at Audubon in South Jersey. Um, coming out of such a strong and highly recognized program, I benefited from him in many ways. Uh, he showed absolutely no favoritism cared hard for his players and set bars and expectations that were high. Uh, when they weren't met, you knew it pretty quickly. Uh, the deep desire to win and excel was the required outcome from him. Best thing Coach Horan ever did for me was bench me my junior year after 11 games, which unfortunately was for me the year that resulted in a state championship, and I didn't start till the end. Um, and I didn't deserve it because I wasn't hitting. So it was the best thing he ever did for me, though, was benching me. And uh, it was a huge nudge for me to steer clear of contentment in my athletic career. Acted as a propellant for the next five. Uh, coach also taught me how to respectfully fear those in authority. I won't tell you the, uh, the rules of fear that he instilled in us there, but he did, all, he did often remind, Nate was a teammate of mine, he, he told us all the time, you know, I don't work for the school, I'm a, I'm a postal worker. So, <laughs> run hard. Brooklawn Baseball, Coach Beans, Dennis Barth, was also, is also deserves some recognition. Uh, he only carried on the gritty baseball during the summer, ba summer play. Um, that's another World Series recognized program in uh, Legion. Uh, when at all costs was his mentality for sure. Playing in these programs around many players that were much, much better than me, having to earn every bat, every rep, literally produced this approach of getting shot out of a cannon every time I stepped on the field. It was a privilege to be there, a privilege to play a great game. When you had the opportunity to play, why would you want to do anything else but win? Coach Horan and Coach Barth carried these programs on their shoulders, and I was just thankful to be a byproduct. Unfortunately, Stan Exeter, my coach, 
from uh, Arcadia was not able to be here today. Uh, I think he's actually on a visit um, with his son for soccer down south. Soccer. Come on. <laughs> right? What, ha- what happened to that kid? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> he, uh, Exeter was, was awesome. He, he did what any good coach does. He took a, what I would consider a very rough, very gritty, very ready, fire, aim type of player uh, and nurtured, groomed, developed, and sharpened. He was a, per- he was a people first, I'm sorry, person first, player second coach who cared much more about family and grades than he ever did about baseball. I'm sure that makes the uh, leadership at Arcadia also proud to know that that, that, that was carried on way back when as well, the uh, academics first men- mind- uh, mindset. He did care about baseball, though. I believe he produced the first 100-win class in 2006, which was my graduating year, uh, in four years. To my presenter, Nate, thanks to his wife, Angela, for being here. Their two little girls couldn't make it today. Um, But thanks for being a great wife to my best friend. Nate and I have been friends, as he said, for more than 30 years, which started on the ball field at eight years old. He is my best man as well. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks for playing the role today. Um, Dad. What a great conclusion for us, like an exclamation point to the end of a wonderful race in baseball together. You ingrained so many aspects that yielded this work ethic and hustle, playing the game the right way, always making me believe I was better than I was. I'm so thankful for you and glad we could share in this together today. And finally, the person to receive the honor for today is my Lord Jesus. He is my creator. Every fiber of my being was knitted together by him for purpose as they have been with all of you here today, whether you recognize that or not. By him, all things were created, and by him, all things consist. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to serve him with my life. Uh, I'm actually no longer a regional manager with All-Star. I left that 16-year career to be a pastor at my church with, uh, with my buddy Nate. The reason I conclude here is it gives full explanation to any success that I've had in this life. When you have chosen the right master, the reward you are working for is far greater Whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not to men. Run in such a way that you may win. Not everyone who competes exercises self-control in everything. However, they do it to receive a perishable crown, but we an imperishable one. As a college athlete, the willingness to push yourself harder and longer is the key. Strive to bring body and mind into complete control. Excel the skill to receive a reward. Push past discomfort. Push the limits of endurance. Never satisfy with mediocrity. Pay the price for excellence. When done for sport, these things can quickly be forgotten. When rewards are won, the glory achieved and the shine is momentary. How much more should the strive be for an imperishable reward? How much harder should the labor be to hear well done from your actual maker? These are questions I chose to answer in my own life, which made the baseball and everything that came with it secondary. So all credit today is his, and I thank you guys very much for the honor of listening. Thank you. Thank you, John and Nate. I'd now like to invite our next inductee, Jackie Law, and her presenter, Rick Brownell, to the stage. For those of you that don't know, me and Jackie were actually very good friends while we were undergrads here, so it's, it's an honor for me to be able to present her to everybody as a, a Hall of Famer. Um, our next inductee is Jackie Law from the class of 2013. A four-year member of the Arcadia University Women's Soccer Program, Law was named the third-team All-American in 2010, the first All-American in program history. Law was also first-team All-Region in 2010 and third-team All-Region in 2009 and 2011, a second-team ECAC All-Star in 2013, a first-team All-Mac Commonwealth selection in 2009, 2010, 2011, and 2013. Law also also led the team to an ECAC championship in 2013, where she was named the tournament's most outstanding player. During her career, Law finished with 48 wins in goal, recording 363 saves with 33 shutouts. Law stands first in wins for her career, 
first in saves, first in shutouts, fourth in save percentage at 848, and fourth in goals against average at .84. Law reached the top 10 in single season history for shutouts three times with 11 in 2009, 10 in 2010, and seven in 2013. She was top 10 for saves three times with 112 in 2009 and 86 in 2010 and 2013. She reached the top 10 twice for save percentage with 889 in 2009 and 851 in 2013. Finally, Law reached the top 10 twice for goals against average at 0 0.69 in 2013 and 0 0.71 in 2009. While in Glenside, Law was also a three-year member of the women's basketball team here at Arcadia. Law graduated with her bachelor's in English in 2013 and earned her master's in human sciences from Hood College. Law is currently the head women's soccer coach at Union County College in New Jersey. Jackie is being presented today by Arcadia women's soccer head coach Rick Brownell, who I would now like to invite to the podium. Jackie, 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 Jackie. This might be a roast. I've been fortunate enough to give a few speeches in the, uh, you know, for, for some inductees in the past, and I sort of consider myself usually a pretty serious guy, but today we might be a little different. Let's have some fun here. This is good morning. I'm honored to be presenting here, of course, for one of Arcadia women's soccer's all-time top goalkeepers, Jackie Law. As you've just heard, Jackie had an extremely distinguished career here, and when thinking of how best to describe Jackie's effect on our program, it was much more than simply her soccer prowess. Well, let me start with Jackie, the person. It's no surprise to anyone who knows her, she has a huge personality, and her high energy is evident to all. I had another high-spirited, high-energy goalie who played, for here, played here not long ago. I nicknamed her Tornado, and it stuck. I never gave Jackie a nickname, but if I did, it would probably be Hurricane. <laughs> Jackie came into the program and immediately made a major impact during her first preseason, and not just on the field. You see, Jackie was a relentless prankster, a jokester, and it didn't matter who you were on the team, she was an equal opportunity teaser. Her energy and her voice were a nonstop cluster of verbiage, usually poked in someone's direction and many times me. As a side note, please let me mention, <clears throat> as I use the word like hazing, it was very, very far from any reality in our program, uh, as everybody would know. But <clears throat> so far, in fact, during one of our team breaks, um, as a joke to her persistent teasing of everyone, one of my assistant coaches asked the entire team, hey, has anyone been hazed by Jackie? And uh, as far as ref referring to her prankster. <clears throat> well, the whole team laughed, and then one by one, people started raising their hands. <laughs> uh, sophomores, juniors, seniors. So, um, and then after everyone raised their hand, everybody stopped, then all of a sudden the assistant coach raised his hand. <laughs> and then when that happened, I raised mine. That should tell you all you need to know about the impact Jackie made. Seriously, Jackie was always fun-loving. Laughter was always around her. As she often the case, the biggest teaser also has the biggest heart. And she completely adored and cared very deeply for her teammates and treated them as family. Jackie the athlete. So there's no question Jackie was a phenomenal athlete. She was tall, she had an awesome vertical leap, and the biggest wingspan I've ever seen in women's soccer. Uh, with her hands, she could jump and pluck the ball out of the sky when any team tried to drive a, a cross or a high shot on her. She also had an exceptional kinesthetic awareness of where the ball was and where it was going, and many times just walked to the spot, waiting for the ball to land into her hands. This combination is extremely rare, and she appeared to make giant saves with seemingly great ease. Jackie was an absolute coach's dream in the nets, and she frustrated the best teams in the country with her goalkeeping abilities. To this day... Jackie has influenced the greatest number of coaches that I run into to inquire, when is that kid graduating? 
As you can imagine, she completely altered our team competitiveness. We played with much greater confidence, knowing she was behind the team to stop the breakdowns and mistakes in front of her. In Jackie's first season, we went 15-2-3, with our only two losses to Messiah that year, who went 25-0-1 and won the national championship. We had a short postseason that year because of losing to Messiah in the conference finals. <clears throat> this bothered Jackie to no end, being very good, but having the season end so abruptly with an almost guaranteed loss each year to Messiah. Over the next few seasons, Jackie not only helped the team set record wins, she helped escalate our program to new heights, and by the time she graduated, with our fair share of setbacks, I'm sure Jackie remembers the snowball. Yes, well, that's for a different time. We finished her final season in 2013 with our first ever ECAC championship, having been underdogs and beating all three very strong opponents that year. The finals was won on penalty kicks, and Jackie stopped all but one penalty for us, sealing the championship. See, there were some good memories in there. <laughs> Jackie, you helped, got, you helped ignite our program into postseason winning. We followed that year with two more ECACs back to back to back, and then four years of NCAA tournament competition with a huge conference win over Messiah in 2017. Jackie, you've left a great legacy. Your fun, upbeat personality and amazing presence in the goal will always be remembered by everyone who experienced it. And here, your legacy lives on. Thank you for all you've done for the Arcadia Women's Soccer Program. Good morning. I promise I'm going to be as brief as possible. Um, Adam already told me that if I go over my allotted time, they can take this honor right away from me. So I'm going to try to be really speedy. Um, before I start, I want to really thank everyone involved in putting this together, the Hall of Fame committee, um, especially Mike, Adam, Brian. Um, I was not the easiest person to wrangle and get pictures from and stuff like that. So um, this is a really great event. You guys really know how to make a girl feel special. Um, so I really appreciate it. Uh, this speech is going to mostly be just about gratitude. Um, you all have heard a lot about me in the last few minutes, uh, but the truth is there's not one thing that I have achieved in my life that I have achieved on my own. Um, I am so grateful for my mom, uh, who, even as a single mother, raising three kids, never missed one of my games my whole life. Um, that didn't change when I came to Arcadia. It's about a three-hour round trip uh, from her home to campus, and there she was every game with her folding chair, following me from goal to goal as I moved in the halves. Um, six hour round trip to Messiah to play basketball, to see us you know, get our butts kicked. Uh, she was there at every game. Um, to emphasize my point, there was one game at Widener. Uh, we had finished warming up. We were about to take the field. I looked into the stands. I didn't see she was there. So I actually went to coach and I said, coach, something's wrong. My mom's not here. And him being very reasonable said, She's probably just like a little bit late. And I said, Coach, you don't understand. My mom is not late. There's something wrong. Um, turns out there was just traffic and she was a little late. Um, I am only standing here today because of her commitment to and her love for her kids. Um, there's not been a day on this earth that I have felt uh, alone or unwanted or unloved. Uh, and that is all because of her. Uh, so thank you. Sitting directly next to my mom at all of my games and here today is my stepfather, Jeff. Um, now, he'll tell you he's not the biggest soccer or basketball fan. Uh, he's more of an American football kind of guy. Uh, but he was always there at every game, and he was always my biggest advocate. Honestly, don't even bring up the 2009 Rookie of the Year situation, or he will start to rattle off stats and yell about how it should have been me. Um, so thanks, Jeff. Uh, the other two most important men in my life are my brothers, Joe and Jared, uh, who helped me grow up happy, safe, and tough. Um, I'd also really like to take this opportunity while I'm on a stage at a podium to formally and publicly thank them for moving me into and out of numerous apartments in Glenside. <laughs> they barely talk to me now. Um, I love you guys. Thank you. Uh, I also want to thank uh, my partner and the love of my life, Mary Kate. Um, we met in kindergarten. Uh, she played hard to get for about 20 years, but <laughs> finally convinced her to give me a shot. Uh, it's been the best six years of my life. Uh, she lifts me up. 
Uh, she lifts me up at all times. She challenges me to step outside my comfort zone, and uh, she makes me laugh endlessly. Um, she's even uh, learned to love watching soccer and will yell at the refs with me. So it's really what true love is all about. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my time at Arcadia, and I cannot talk about uh, Arcadia without first talking about Coach Brownell, um, who I don't feel comfortable calling Rick or anything yet. So I feel like I'm not far enough removed for that. Uh, coach was actually one of the biggest factors in me choosing to come to Arcadia. Um, he was the only coach that I spoke to when I was recruiting that didn't talk about all about wins and losses. Um, he talked about culture. Uh, he talked about how much the girls enjoyed being around each other, how they were best friends, um, and how important that was to him. Um, when I mentioned that I wanted to also play basketball, he didn't discourage me like many other college coaches did. Uh, he emphasized how important it was to him that his athletes live uh, full and happy lives on campus, and if that for me meant playing two sports, he was all about it. Um, Coach Brownell and all of the other great coaches that I've had, actually, let's give Coach Brownell a round of applause, please. Thank you. He really went, he really went through a lot with me for four years. Um, Coach Brownell and all of the uh, coaches I've had that I've had the honor of working throughout my life with, uh, Kevin Ewing, uh, Crystal Gibson at Arcadia, Bruce Davis, Sylvia Mack Oliver, these coaches are the reasons I'm standing here today um, and the reason I'm now a college soccer coach. Um, I want to impact kids in the same way that Coach Brownell has impacted me. Um, as a coach now, I talk a lot about intrinsic motivation, finding the will to compete from within, uh, but I have to be honest, I was not that kind of player. Um, I really struggled to find the will and the desire within myself to get up early and work out and play through injuries or pain or struggle with the workload or the class load or time management. I just found it really difficult to pull that from within me. So what I did instead was dedicate myself to being the best team and I could be. Uh, every workout I did, every morning I woke up with sh sore shoulders and knees from hitting the ground, I found the motivation to keep going from my teammates. Uh, for me, it was never about personal accomplishments or personal praise. In fact, all that makes me a little uncomfortable, which I realize may not seem the case with the five minute speech about myself. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> the most rewarding moments for me were team achievements, um, and more importantly, just team events. Uh, Wissa Hick and Runs, uh, pregame dinners, preseason team naps, just trying to survive three a days. Um, there's something about struggling through adversity as a group that makes that group family as opposed to friends. Still to this day, if any of my teammates called on me, I would be there simply for the fact that we shared something that many people do not get to share and experience working together, living together 24-7 for years, working towards one common goal, uh, being just one piece of the whole. Uh, that was and will forever be my favorite part of athletics. Um, and if I could give one piece of advice to the few student athletes that are in the room, uh, don't take your time here for granted. Um, soak it up, enjoy every minute with your teammates, even the bad minutes when you're on the end line waiting to sprint or you're in the weight room at 5 a.m. Trust me when I say when it's all over, you're really gonna miss it. Um, I just want to thank, once again, everyone involved in this, the Hall of Fame committee, anybody that helped me get to this moment. Uh, it is the most humbling experience of my life so far uh, and a great honor. Arcadia will always be a part of me and always be a second home. Thank you. Before we continue, I just want everybody to know that I did not tell Jackie I was going to take her award back. <laughs> but thank you, Jackie and Rick. I would now like to invite our next inductee, Amy McLean, and her father, Frank Barone, to the stage. Our next inductee is Amy McLean from the class of 2000. A four-year member of the Beaver College women's lacrosse team, McLean was a three-time first-team All-Pennsylvania Athletic Conference selection at goalkeeper in 1998, 1999, and 2000. During her career, McLean posted two of the top 12 save percentages in NCAA Division III history, posting a 681 percentage in 1997, the ninth best all-time, and a 675 percentage in 1998, the 12th best. McLean also set multiple career NCAA records, posting the third best saves per game, a minimum 500 saves, with 16.76 and the 15th most saves with 821. 
On April 13, 1998, against Cabrini, McLean logged the eighth most saves in a single game with 35, while her 675 save percentage in 1998 was the best in all of Division III. In the under a Bachelor of Arts in 2000 in elementary education, early elementary education with a concentration in special education from Beaver before earning her Master of Education in Special Education Educational Leadership from Temple in South Florida. Amy currently works as a grant coordinator for the Quality Early Education System based out of Hillsborough Community College in Florida, which she helped found to provide hands-on coaching and training to teachers throughout Hillsborough County. McLean and her husband, John, have five children, Gianna, age 22, Aubrey, age 17, Maya, age 15, Camille, age 14, and Adam, age 9. Amy is being presented today by her father, Frank Barone, who I would now like to invite to the podium. Well, I am so very honored and fortunate today, and I thank Be Be uh, Arcadia, <laughs> Beaver is what I remember, and Amy for making this possible. I have the opportunity to describe my daughter, to help honor her accomplishments, her character, and what defines the person she is. So thanks for this, really. It's an opportunity that I'll, I'll never forget. You've heard about her accomplishments as an athlete, and to say the least, Amy was an outstanding lacrosse goalie, player, and team leader. But Amy always excelled at sports from a very young age, right from the beginning, through high school, into college, and even beyond college. <clears throat> She's always been committed to tireless, and tireless to positively impact everything she did and everyone she worked with. Her relationships with other people and the way she encourages them and helps them is just part of Amy, just, just the way she has always been. Initially, Amy was driven by her own early struggles in education, and she etched herself a path where she could actually improve early childhood education for others, and she's done it, and she's doing it. Academically... Academically, after Beaver College, as used to be back then for me, she had her first baby. And at the same time, pursued advanced training and education at Temple and in the Tampa Bay Area. She started out directing daycare centers, organizing them, building them, helping create them, and then creating and running a county program uh, in education and safety, where she is responsible as a uh, principal investigator and coordinator of the uh, grants that fund this program. Uh, and it's uh, throughout all Hillsborough County in the Tampa Bay area. It covers quite a bit. She trains others to make a difference on all education levels at all the county schools. It's much more than a full-time job for her and she works to continually improve the program and promote the training and growth of herself and her staff and all the county educational institutions. Like her earlier exceptional performance in college athletics, she continually drills herself and others, always concerned with doing the best for the team and for education. This is true for her commitments to leadership work and bettering education, but also to it extends into her marriage, friendships, and especially to her exceptionally high-quality parenting. She is relentless in self-sacrificing and considering and acting to support the needs of each coworker, friend, and family member. She does not know how to quit at this and exhibits, exhibits exceptional drive to make the world a better place every day, in every moment, and for every person she comes in contact with. This is uh, not blowing smoke here. This is truth, and she really is this way. She's always been this way. It's never changed. Now, in addition to her job, she has many family responsibilities, and you heard about the, the beautiful family and the beautiful grandchildren and great-grandchildren that I have benefited from. 
three daughters play competitive and high school soccer. All are Florida State champs. One of those daughters gone, has gone to culinary school, is training to be a chef. The other has already awarded a full scholarship to Newberry College in South Carolina for next year. She's already committed. Uh, her youngest, uh, and then there's a younger da uh, daughter, just a couple years younger, who's also just as good in following in those footsteps. Her youngest son is nine, my grandson, and also plays competitive ice hockey and now is trying out for a traveling competitive team with the older boys, 10, 11 year olds. It's quite an accomplishment for a nine year old. He just started playing hockey a year ago. So well, how do they do it? How do these kids do it? It's all because, absolutely because of Amy. Amy's relentless support of her children's academics. They're all A students too. And also providing the scheduling, transportation to practices and games and significant community council memberships, committee memberships that she's involved in to make all this work. All goes on along with that day job I was talking about, which she's doing so much for education. For Amy, every day is an expression of strength, support, and love to those around her. Her leadership in this never changes, as I said, and again, goes back to her early childhood. I cannot be any prouder to be her father. I couldn't be. And I am so happy about today. Thanks to Arcadia for what you've done for her. Thank you, Amy. I and so many others love you. I too don't want to drop that. So I have five children. I'm not going for a six. I don't need that record. All right. That was beautiful, Dad. Thank you so much. So thank you, Adam, Brian. Um, th this is so special. I said I wasn't going to cry. I'm not going to cry. It's not happening. Um, thank you, Arcadian University Hall of Fame Committee. I'm honored, humbled, and blessed to be inducted into Arcadian University's Hall of Fame. It's also an honor to be surrounded by a great group of people, faculty, staff, students, athletes, and coaches. It's nice to be back home on my old stomping grounds. Yes, it does look very different. I'm very jealous we didn't have a turf field, okay? We used to spray paint. I was telling the lacrosse team earlier today, I, I remember spray painting the grass green <laughs> um, at times. So, you know, but I'm old, you know, I'm not, I'm not young. So that was many years ago, but it's, it's beautiful. It hasn't changed and, it, and it's home. So it's nice to be back home. Um, Arcadia, which I remember, like my dad said, is Beaver College, was simply uh, just that, my other home. It was small, you knew everyone, and the community was tight, super tight. I think about my experiences, and I can honestly say I never really had a bad one. This is hard to imagine in college, but truly it's factual. The four years spent here were the best years of my life. I was able to focus on my education, and play the sport I loved at a competitive level. These years set me up for future success. They taught me about extended family, my Beaver College lacrosse team and coach, balance, work life, school life, sports life. And it taught me how to take care of others, the community involvement, Special Olympics, we called it BASE, Beaver College Association for Special Education, which I was an active member. And it was founded while I was here. And it was who I was. There were so many professors that took the time to make sure you were just not another number. I always felt like I was somebody and I was the special one. They always made me feel special. They always cared about your education and you as a person. I will forever be grateful for my college experience here. I was gonna be a Buckeye. I was going to Ohio State. Best decision I ever made was to come to Arcadia. I wouldn't have set records at Ohio State, that's for sure. But First, I would like to thank my dad, Frank Barone. He has taught me everything about the game of life. 
knowing the difference between right and wrong, and to be confident to always choose right, as well as to be confident who I am and what I stand for. He was always my rock, my mentor, the person who believed I was the best and could accomplish anything, even when I really wasn't and I didn't. He always thought I was a rock star. The person who instilled in me at a very young age to be kind, to put others first, work ethics, and that greatness is truly only achieved within. It's never gonna be a record. It's about the person you are and how you treat others. People don't care about the education you have, right? We're not gonna die with that. They care about how you are with each other, how you are to people, how kind is your heart. The old man over there that at 73 works more hours in a week than I work in two, literally. Dad, if I'm around at 73 like you, I will not be working like you, I promise. I'm retiring at 55. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all the extra lacrosse leagues, showcases, private trainings. I made you do my entire life, my entire childhood. I started picking up a lacrosse stick, I think at four, and I always had genius ideas to join another league, another league, another league. It was never enough. So I, I can't thank you enough for all of those years. Um, even, even when you didn't have it, you always found a way. My mom, Diane, uh, who couldn't be here because she's watching my children in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> uh, super thankful for her. Um, she's been with me uh, through the good times, the bad, um, anything I've experienced throughout my life. She was always there to encourage, console, and motivate me when I needed it the most. To my stepdad, Jim, the lacrosse player that never said no to the millions of times I made him train with me in the cold, in the snow, out there playing with me. You were never too busy to shoot on me, to play catch, or teach me new, new moves. Thank you for teaching me the game and for loving me so much. Both of them never uh, missed a game throughout my entire lacrosse career. Uh, they made it hard for me with my kiddos playing sports. Um, it's hard to show up to everything. So, you know, thanks to them for being overachievers. I'm still trying to make it to every game. To my husband, thanks for loving me endlessly and for you know, putting up with my independent, uh, competitive nature. I love, absolutely love what we created. You will forever lose at most games. Even when you actually win, I will always be the champ to at trouble. I'm just saying. To my children, uh, you are my everything. Um, you are my greatest accomplishments and you make my days bright and challenging you will definitely forever keep me young. Again, being here is truly an honor, a privilege, an accomplishment I will cherish with great pride. Uh, congrats to all the inductees. Uh, go Knights. Thank you, Amy and Frank. I would now like to invite our final inductee, Andrea Reynolds-Pizzuti, and her presenter, Jackie Confort, to the stage. Our final inductee today is Andrea Reynolds-Pizzuti from the class of 1996. A four-year member of the Beaver College softball program, Pizzuti was a three-year first-team all-pack con conference selection in 1993, 1994, and 1995, and was named academic all-pack in 1996. For her career, Pizzuti batted 430 with 117 hits and 272 at-bats across 84 games, with 98 runs scored, 60 RBIs, 39 walks, 34 stolen bases, 14 doubles, and eight triples. Pizzuti's 532 batting average in 1995 remains the highest in program history, while she ranks in the top 10 in batting average, triples, and stolen bases for her career. Pizzuti graduated with her bachelor's in psychology in 1996 and earned her master's in social work from the University of South Florida. I put 1996, but I'm guessing that wasn't the right year. Pizzuti is currently the vice president of home dialysis at DeVita. Pizzuti and her husband Kevin have two children, Jackson, age 19, and Ava, age 17. 
Angie is being presented today by her best friend and college roommate, Jackie Confer, who I would now like to invite to the podium. Good afternoon. Congratulations to all the 2022 Hall of Fame inductees. I can't say Arcadia, I'm Beaver College forever, so <laughs> <laughs> I just can't. Um, my name is Jacqueline Confer Sullivan, and it's my genuine delight to tell you all about my lifelong best friend and teammate, Mrs. Andrea Reynolds Pizzuti. I was told that I'd have three, four minutes to tell you about Andrea, and I thought <laughs> it's going to be difficult. But then I thought, how appropriate, because I remember how fast Andrea truly is. All those stolen bases and hits that would have been, or should have been, outs had it been someone else doing the running. Seriously, her batting average record is the stuff of legends. So I'm going to talk with Andrea like speed, try to keep up. Those are some pretty spectacular softball stats, right? However, as impressive as they are, knowing Andrea, they aren't surprising in the least. In fact, if there was a Hall of Fame for amazing human beings, she'd be in it. Mom Hall of Fame, Jackson and Ava, are proof she'd be in it. There is nothing she won't do for her children. And geez, do they have a booked calendar. The activities, I can't imagine. She supports Jackson and Ava from the lacrosse sidelines, football stands, weightlifting competitions, cheer competitions, national beauty pageants, the Ocala Young Lady Red Hats Club or something like that. I don't know, this sounds weird. Um, <laughs> but the point is, if her kids are involved, you know Andrea will be there supporting them the entire time. She shows up. Wife Hall of Fame, Kevin, you're a lucky guy. Though, she definitely is equally lucky to have you. And I only have three minutes, so everyone will have to take my word on that one. Best friend Hall of Fame? 100%. We first met in sixth grade when Andrea moved to her dad's house in Voorhees, New Jersey. Everyone was talking about the new girl. She was beautiful, intelligent, stylish, and played sports. Naturally, the arrival of a smart, athletic, and pretty girl ruffled a few feathers of those peckish hens of the in crowd. Which, quite fortunately for me, a social yet lone wolf type of kid, their adolescent insecurities and clicky exclusionary behavior brought Andrea and I together. Over the past 37 years, Andrea has been a Hall of Fame best friend. She has been my trusted confidant, coworker, teammate, my co pilot, my navigator, my therapist, personal stylist. I'm not allowed to wear blue eyeliner ever. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was actually, I think, the first day we I'd met. Be back in style like, like <laughs> not allowed. Sage advisor, secret keeper, shoulder to lean and cry on, surrogate parent at times, staunch advocate, fairy godmother to my children, my fiercest protector, the yin to my yang, the thelma to my Louise, the beef fry to my end charm necklace. At my wedding, she stood by me as my maid of honor, despite knowing the marriage would fail. She did try to warn me beforehand. I should have listened, I didn't, but she still showed up. During my marriage, when I would call her in tears, she would answer the call and listen. My pain was her pain. She would listen and advise, knowing full well that I'd be calling again in the same situation. Even so, she still showed up and always answered my call. When I became a newly single mom, she flew up from Florida to help me move and start to rebuild a home for myself and my sons. She had young kids of her own. It was truly amazing. I didn't have to ask her to come. She simply showed up. Godmother Hall of Fame? That one too, no doubt. This past spring, she sent an amazing dress to my son's girlfriend for prom. My son's girlfriend comes from quite limited means, and her mother died a few years back. So she had no one to take her prom shopping. I'm not a girl mom. I have two boys for a reason. Um, <laughs> But of course, Andrea saved the day, or prom, and the next thing I knew, in our mailbox, a dress showed up. A 
a few months ago when Andrea asked me to be her presenter today. I was like, oh, I totally got this one, and thought I would regale you all with amazing firsthand tales of Andrea's incredible achievements on the collegiate field. Unfortunately, though, and much to my chagrin and my parents, turns out the vast majority of my college memories were stolen by Boone's Farm peach wine. <laughs> I, I remember borrowing trays, borrowing trays from the calf to go sledding and practicing for Mr. Beaver contest, but no actual college ball playing memories. <laughs> I still play, by the way, I do remember last season. Um, so, in an attempt to not completely fail my best friend, who deserves so much for her selflessness and amazingness, and I reached out to a few of our former college teammates for help. Kim Kelly says, great parties at her apartment. <laughs> oh, team leader that would also have something positive to say. Jen Hillman. I remember her smiling a lot, like a lot, a lot. And oh my God, yes, the parties. How could I forget? Joel and Neve, she said, always a smile on her face. Always looked model ready. She really did. It didn't matter the weather. Andrea was like a Sports Illustrated model. Could always count on her to make the play or for a clutch hit or to get on base. And she threw great parties. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Gilner. Andrea, queen of consistency at bat and at center field. She was an amazing teammate, led by example. Our freshman outfield, all three of us were freshmen, Julie Meehan left, Andrea center, me right. I'll always remember, we, she, helped bring our team to be conference champions. You never worried when anything was hit to center field. Did she not get invited to parties? Because she didn't. She was invited. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Christine Chauvert, also known as Bear. Andrea was a great friend and a wonderful player. What I always appreciated about her was how she brought us all together, never excluded anyone, and was always there to pick you up. What a wonderful honor for an amazing teammate. She didn't get invited to parties either. <laughs> Coach Linda Detra, who's not quite verbose, said, ditto, Bear. <laughs> And coach Wayne Mara, Andrea's freshman coach, who brought her to the team, uh, who is overseas right now for the birth of his granddaughter, or his grandson, um, but he had these words to say about Andrea. Andrea came to our team and provided just the spark we needed to propel us to greater success than we had ever previously achieved. Positive attitude and a love of the game were her trademarks, not to mention the obvious, which is that Andrea was a fantastic player. I'm not surprised that she has undertaken the enormous task of caring for her father in, his, in the time of his greatest need. It's character as well as talent that makes someone great. Having both is why Andrea inducting into the Hall of Fame is so deserved. Andrea, I wish, I wish you and your family peace and strength. That's from Coach Wayne. Bear with me. Coach Mara wrote those thoughtful sentiments because just as Andrea can be counted on on the playing field, she is counted on by our family. Hall of Fame daughter, possibly the most accurate description of Andrea I can imagine. In the past few years, Andrea's mother, father, and sister have each been diagnosed with cancer. Her mom, Fran, was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer that amazingly is now in remission. And I can't imagine how Andrea scheduled everything and made everything look so easy while she was there for her mom, for her treatments and, and everything she did. Her sister Dana um, had breast cancer, but fortunately was caught in the early stages and is also doing very well. Um, Andrea's father, Jim, has stage two lung cancer that has metastasized and he is now in hospice care. Andrea is the ultimate pillar of strength and support. Her involvement in her family's treatment plans and dedication to their care are unparalleled. In true Andrea fashion, just a few weeks ago, she again showed up 
by making her father's hospice care paramount and moved her father in with her family. I know Jim's heart is bursting with pride for her today as he is surely her number one fan. Tied with me, I think, though. Jim could always be found on the sidelines at our games, cheering Andrea on, sending much love to them all. I am beyond proud that Andrea is my best friend and that she asked me to present her here today. There's no greater honor. She deserves so much. So everyone, with great affection and with a special sense of pride, I am honored to present to you on this day of her induction into the Beaver 2022 <laughs> Athletic Hall of Fame, Mrs. Andrea Reynolds Pizzuti. Wow, Jackie. <laughs> um, well, see, that's why I picked you to present me. I, I didn't know we were going to go all the way there, but, but we did. Um, so thank you. Um, and uh, for our, well, I'll just start because I'll, I'll probably mess up. So I'm just going to stick to the script here. Um, so, so thank you, Jackie, <laughs> for the walk down memory lane. Um, and for always, always being by my side. Um, I am blessed and lucky to have the same best friend for, well, I guess it's almost 40 years now. I put 37, but we're old. Um, and to have you here means the world to me. Um, thank you for that amazing introduction. Um, I wanted to first thank Brian, Mike, Adam, and Scott for this amazing honor. Um, I think when you get a random email from your alma mater, people automatically think it's for a donation or for money. Um, and honestly, the furthest thing from my mind was anything like this. Um, so I'm humbled and extremely honored to be here today among these other five amazing inductees. Um, I also want to thank my amazing family, um, Kevin, Ava, and Jackson for being here. Um, it's, it's not easy to wrangle um, two teenagers um, to step away from all of their stuff. Um, and so I'm really lucky that they were both able to be here with me. Um, and and I, I always say this, I, I think I told Brian this, I know sometimes you don't actually think I played softball in college, um, but here is actual proof that I did. <laughs> My name is on that thing right there. Um, and, and thank you to the rest of my family um, that I hope we're able to use the technology to stream. <laughs> so thank you for having it, um, for Arcadia, for having the ability to stream it. Um, I think there's probably a lot of people watching, so love you guys. Um, I can't remember a time that I didn't love playing softball. Um, the first time I picked up a bat, I think I was around five in my grandfather's backyard. Um, my grandfather didn't have any grandsons, sadly, and he loved baseball, so he was determined to teach both of his granddaughters how to hit and catch a ball. We started out with wiffle ball bats um, and gradually made our way to tennis balls. Once we started hitting them over the fence, though, and my grandfather got tired of hoisting us over the fence to go get them, he thought it was time to graduate to real organized sports, and so my softball career began. I played for my local town travel teams for years, um, and it is there that I met some of the absolute best softball players I've ever played with. Um, one of my most memorable times was our infamous trip to Texas in 1990. Jackie was there um, for the 16 and under girls fast pitch ASA national championships. Um, there were some pictures in my slideshow from that. Um, I can honestly say that we played against some of the most talented softball players in the United States at that time. Um, and that experience really solidified my desire to continue playing the game that I loved after high school. And it's, it's funny when I look back and I think um, it was Amy who said it, like the, I had the most fun. I played softball for a really long time. But when I look back and I was thinking about this speech, the, the most fun I had was when I was here, um, was when I was playing at Beaver. 
Um, high school softball was fun, but in all honesty, my coach at the time did not think I had what it took to play, college, to play at the college level. Um, I did, though, have an awesome JV coach who wanted to try something new and innovative with me because of my speed, um, and that is slap bunting. So for those familiar with the sport, this hitting technique is widely used now, um, but back then it was new, progressive, and super weird looking. Um, I would get up to the bat. People didn't know what I was doing on the left-hand side of the batter's box. It was, it was kind of cool to watch everybody's reaction. Um, so he and I worked together for hours to, to finally get it figured out. Um, and once I did, my game and playing was truly completely different. I took that new skill, um, and I think that is how, and I, well, I know that is how I was able to really play competitively um, at the college level. Um, the summer before my senior year in high school is when I seriously started considering my college options. Um, there was a lot that went through my mind. Did I 100% want to play in college? If that answer was yes, then realistically, what was a good fit for me? I toured a ton of schools, um, and this is near and dear to my heart. My daughter is a senior, and so we are, we are on the college tour of um, touring schools, mostly in the South. Um, but um, Clemson, UNC, Duke, Furman, um, lots of other local options here. Um, but I knew D2, D1 and D2 really were not in the cards for me. I was realistic. Um, and while those schools were amazing, if I chose them, softball would be, would be out. So I turned my sights on schools that I actually thought I could get some playing time, um, and so began my four years at Beaver College. Um, one of the best things about playing college sports at Beaver was that I was able to get the best of both worlds as far as being an athlete and being a college student. I, I was listening to you, Amy, and your speech was, this, ours are so similar, like just our experiences here um, are so similar. Um, I was an athlete, which alone is, is pretty awesome. Um, but in those D1 and even D2 schools, being a student athlete usually means that sport becomes your life for the next four years. You're, you really don't have any social life. You don't really get to enjoy it. Um, but that was not the case here at Beaver. I'm not saying it wasn't super competitive because it 100% was very competitive. But I also got to be um, a traditional college student. And I thoroughly enjoyed and took advantage of all the things that went along with that too. <laughs> Jackie mentioned some of the things. Um, everyone in this room thinks we just had parties every weekend, and, and maybe we did, I don't, you know. It's a long time ago. Um, having that balance was crucial to my success both on and off the field. Um, I have so many incredible memories of my time here. Um, it's funny, I, my son is a sophomore at Florida State, um, and I've spent a good deal of time up there. Um, and I will definitely say that a 40,000 student campus is very different from a 1500 uh, student campus on a lot of levels. Everyone knows everyone, and that could be good, and that could be not so good. Um, you can't hide here, um, that's for sure. But when I look back on my four years, there are a few things that definitely stand out. Um, here's just a couple. Uh, meeting all of my people, um, all of my friends, um, I'm just so lucky. I have Dolan here. I have Jen here. I met them um, my sophomore year, but just so so blessed to have friends um, that I that I would say are probably my friends for life. Um, our 1993 softball team um, that was really some of the best playing um, that I probably have ever done. Um, our inaugural Myrtle Beach trip. Um, there were some pictures of that in the slideshow too. Um, my amazing coaches, Jackie mentioned um, Way Mora. Um, he was the one who actually recruited me, um, Linda Detra um, and Leslie Hayes. Um, and then the last one, I mean, my, my best friend, who my best friend since sixth grade, coming up here my sophomore year after I was begging her to come um, and being able to play together with her um, for three more amazing years. Um, being a softball player has taught me so many things that I believe have shaped the person I am today. I bring the competitive, competitiveness I learned on the field to my work life and maybe my home life sometimes um, almost every single day. Um, I may think of this place as Beaver College, 
But whether you call it that or Arcadia University, it is a very special place. It is a small, tight-knit community that has an outsized impact on the lives of those students who go here. Those of us fortunate enough to also represent the Scarlet Knights on the playing field have a special bond with this institution, and I am incredibly honored to be standing here. Thank you very much for a humbling recognition for doing something that I loved. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you, everyone. <clears throat> we promised you a special event, and at least for me, it, 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 held, it held serve. This was, this was awesome on, on many levels, and we truly appreciate your remarks and your memories, and um, it, it has been a special day, absolutely. A couple of housekeeping items. I, I want to add a couple of uh, thank yous and congratulations, specifically to Adam Plenamentos, uh, Plenamentos Scott DeBell, and Ali Cucinetta, a three-team operation in our uh, athletic communications office, all the work they do on a day-to-day -day basis and specifically in pulling together and executing this event. Um, and many times it's thankless work, but they, they work hard day in and day out to, to do a lot of things there to serve our student athletes. And also to Mike Cabinstreet, who didn't get his just due today, uh, the, all the work that he did behind the scenes in working... And the team in University Advancement and the Alumni Office, Esther, Dennis, everyone that was working, Pat, thank you all for your partnership and uh, giving of your time on this incredibly busy weekend. We really, really appreciate it. To the team in facilities that has been working endlessly this weekend with all the setups and breakdowns and our team in, with METS and food services, thank you all for all that you've done. From a housekeeping standpoint, again, there's a lot going on today throughout the day. Uh, as a reminder, our field hockey team is taking on FDU Florham at 12 o'clock at the turf field, followed by men's soccer with Lycoming College at 2.30. Then at 5.30, women's soccer will take on Lycoming as well at the turf. So if you have time and like to stick around, we'd love to have you join us and cheer on the Knights at the turf. As we mentioned to the inductees, we're happy to give you an abridged campus tour of the athletic facilities and the rest of campus if you'd like um, as we eventually break from here. So Mike and I are happy to make ourselves available for the next little bit. Um, as we do break, though, we would like to ask that the inductees, the five of you, please come forward with your awards. We'd like to take a group shot with the banners in the background. We will also make the backdrop available for any follow-up photos that you would like to take with families and friends and presenters and whatever you'd like to do. Um, but from our perspective with our photographer, Brandon, we do want the five inductees to join us on stage for a group shot. Shirley and Betty, we'd love if, uh, I think Betty had to skip out, but Shirley, if you'd like to join us as well, that would be fantastic. Um, other than that, folks, it's been, it's been special. It's been a, a lot of fun. We thank you for your time. Um, I know several, several of you have traveled from a distance, so safe travels back. Thank you for joining us. This concludes our event, and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thank you.